Herzlich willkommen. Thank you. Oh, it works. Uh, thank you for such a nice introduction and thank you for inviting me on this, such a lovely uh, uh, fair and conference. And I would like to thank, uh, thank in particular people talking before me, Dr. Hirt and Professor Frick, because it's a pretty nice introduction to what I want to talk about today. Um, so basically, uh, we've been already, uh, we've seen in practice already, you know, the AI is being used, artificial intelligence is already there. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, the talk is going to be in English. And I want to also apologize for the picture that was before Corona. So this is the Corona look. I hope you don't mind. But, you know, back to the talk. So, you know, uh, people have been using Tesla or Autopilot, uh, AI projects and Google, music selection on Spotify. That's all AI. It's seamless. We have no idea how it works, but it's just great. Hmm? Um, Amazon also, selections, suggestions, all these things. It's wonderful. However, as uh, th has been already discussed today, once we start thinking in terms of uh, collecting data, digitalization, going agile, etc., etc., things start to get very quickly, very, very complicated. Hmm? So our idea behind the company is let's try to keep it stupid and simple as much as we can. Hmm? So what does that mean? Well, we want to game the system. We basically want to help people keep their ways, keep their workflows, at least for the time being, and try to introduce AI as a relatively simple and straightforward add-on. You know, a solution of this type. It's not great. But it works, right? Gaming the system. So, thinking out, outside of the box. And um, so the talk will be a presentation of, of my company and our software. But before I go into that, I just want to mention that for us, in the, uh, this thing is not perfect when one has actually glasses on top of. Um, OK, so um, uh, the, uh, for us at HSA, uh, um, artificial intelligence actually means first and foremost responsibility. How we handle the data that we encounter, data from our customers. Um, then, of course, we want to use the data, leave traces, and in the long term, create uh, right history. So, I'll talk about the scope, a few examples, success stories of, the, of, uh, of our work. Um, what's behind it, some basic concepts, how it works. Um, perhaps uh, a few suggestions or ideas about uh, uh, co cooperation and uh, just contact kind of and some examples of partners and customers, etc. People we work with. So HSA, uh, uh, HS analysis. So when it comes to technology, um, we are deep learning first company, and uh, we started with basically image analysis. Someone mentioned already pathology before me, but we go beyond that. I actually, I am a, a material scientist really first, a computational material scientist, and uh, so I have a somewhat different interests from analyzing uh, histology uh, 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 images, etc. So we're trying to combine all these different aspects. I'll show that uh, uh, soon. Um, but the most important aspect of the technology behind our company is that it can be used by people who are not coders, who are not hackers. They don't know how to write Python or any other uh, programming language, language for that matter. Uh, the system is fully offline capable. What that means is that your data is not exposed to any hacking possibility or any hacking risk on the internet, cloud, and so on. We have cloud solution as well, but uh, the uh, full offline system seems to be, for many, many customers, way more relevant. And uh, we are interested in hardware, uh, and we work on hardware-software integration handheld devices, you name it. 
So when it comes to business, um, basically, as I already mentioned, to some extent, we are interested in automated and integrated AI solutions um, to bring it to, to the masses and to basically help people improve their uh, product, uh, productivity. Um, respons responsibility, handling with the data, affordable pricing, we are financially independent. And there is always a certain level of uh, uh, customization required for our customers, their needs. So we are focused on customers and meeting their needs. And of course, quality insurance. So when it comes to the, co the, the history of the company, I would just like to say we, are found, we, we, are, we were founded in 2015 as a spin-off of KIT in Karlsruhe. We are still in Karlsruhe. Um, and, uh, we are a uh, 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 25 t uh, team of 25 people, um, which is about 150 years of experience in AI. And uh, finally, we are part of uh, Bin Holding. Um, so, uh, beyond AI first imaging processing. So, as I said, we started with imaging processing. This is one of our strengths, but we are very much interested in things that go beyond that. So as you can see here, I hope you can, uh, there is, this is uh, images of spectra, the ESR spectra, spectrum, integrated in a handheld device. Here we have the, uh, uh, so to speak, the uh, um, deep learning in action. So how that works, multi-scale approach to images and an analysis, etc., etc. And this, for example, here is a, uh, uh, QLED uh, thin film, so not, not much to do with uh, uh, medicine, so to speak. Um, and there's a reason for that. There are four specific um, pillars that our company stands on, I would like to uh, say. That's uh, material science, smart industry, uh, pharmaceutical sector and uh, biology and medicine. So here you have many buzzwords, things that we do with our customers. Um, as I am head of material science, I'll focus more on, on, on that aspect. And I just mentioned uh, additive manufacturing, very much present here today. Um, batteries, opto different optoelectronic devices, um, material failure, design and optimization of experiments, and that very nicely integrates with many aspects of, of smart industry here. But of course, the whole idea why we are interested in these different aspects is the confluence, bringing all these things together. So, uh, for example, for medical sector, uh, for uh, introducing new devices, try to miniaturize them, etc., etc. So, um, success stories, I just selected a very few. Um, and um, as already mentioned, QLED. So, um, what do we use these devices for? That's basically screens, TV screens, mobile phone screens. They're based, give or take, on some kind of LED technology nowadays. And uh, they're, made, they're different uh, uh, technologies when it comes to, to, to LED. Um, and what they have in common is that very often, in order to develop these materials, we have very, very expensive and uh, slow experiments, testing. Reason very simple. We have nano-structured materials, molecules, who decide properties of a Screen, mobile phone screen. Very difficult to predict the properties. So one has to do tests. And uh, so that's a major uh, bottleneck. And the analysis of the, the, the data obtained in these experiments is very, it's painstakingly slow and difficult. So here you can see the uh, image, uh, uh, the, the um, microscopic image of the uh, QLED um, thin film. And on the uh, right side is actually 
basically computer-generated 3D object. One can actually zoom in, look into how all these things work. And of course, uh, our customers, uh, people who actually use this module, can do all of these things without a single line of coding. Um, it's just to import the, uh, the data. And this is basically how the interface of our software actually looks like. So, um, sorry, one very important uh, uh, point, why would one actually do this, is actually ultimately is automation. So once we train our network, it can in real time uh, analyze these films, and it can in real time readjust the process parameters in case the optical properties of these thin films are not ideal, or considering what kind of chemistry one puts on these surfaces, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera, that's usually a limiting factor. But still, these uh, agglomerates that form of these quantum dots for this specific application, they can vary depending on pressure, temperature, many other uh, parameters, and these process parameters can be really very nicely optimized by uh, using deep learning. So, uh, another aspect relevant for um, audience today, uh, medical applications. So here we just have a bone marrow biopsy. And uh, once the sample is being taken from a person, there are many different experiments or many different uh, uh, analysis techniques that can actually can be performed. So we can put all these things together. We can uh, do analysis of, uh, of all, these different, uh, the, all these different techniques, can be put together, and then we can cross-reference and check what's really going on. Um, and uh, to go into more detail, so we have um, automatic bi biopsy detection, and we are using explainable AI in two steps. What that means is that we use uh, one, um, uh, in the first step, we actually have to detect all the objects, and we can do that on pixel accuracy. And in the second step, we do the classification. Yeah, and of course, uh, it is possible, as you can see here, change the colors so we can actually do even subclassification. And these things, again, can all be done without any need for coding. Um, so I already mentioned the software, and uh, I was already indicated, uh, indicating that uh, it doesn't require any coding. So basically, this would be one of the first um, Windows, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the thing that will greet you when using the software, and that is a window where you have to load your data. So basically data is being loaded, and so here is a few words about what we can actually do with this data. For example, we have whole slide images, um, so, and they can be stored directly in this data, in, in, in the software. Uh, the, uh, Software will generate actually a database. Um, and if there is already a ground truth data, it, it can automatically do the quantification. Um, as someone already mentioned, AI tends to be very, very quick. That is, uh, uh, of course, the case for us as well. And it has very low hardware requirements. Also, our software uh, plays very well with existing infrastructure. That's a big idea behind not changing um, people's workflows. We want to just do this as an add-on and uh, disturb people as little as possible, so to speak. Um, however, if there is no, say, uh, ground truth data, there was no training, there was no annotations being performed, there is actually an integrated annotation tool within the software. So it basically looks like, uh, uh, how's it called, Microsoft Paint or something like that. And you can just click and point and annotate different objects. And then classify them as you seem fit. 
So it also supports like Wacom, Wacom and uh, like uh, graphical uh, tablets, works on Windows and Linux. Um, and of course, it's completely integrated. So once uh, we have obtained the, uh, the, uh, the, the training set, the, our uh, annotated uh, data sets, it's just one click away to actually start the training process. Um, but how does it work? What did we tuck under? What did I hide away from, from you? So this is actually the uh, sort of like uh, schematic representation, if you wish. Um, so we have data acquisition, then data storage. Then we have, this is basically laboratory equipment can also be integrated in this process. Um, and, uh, and, and hospital equipment. Um, and then we have just basically a computer with uh, HSA software installed on it, which does the analysis of all these things. Uh, for people who actually have uh, uh, larger needs, for example, the uh, pictures of quantum dots that I already showed and the aggregation of, of the uh, quantum dots on thin films, that actually is quite heavy uh, 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 um, process. It's very uh, uh, computer hungry. And that actually can, it has to be performed on a data center of our customer um, and uh, or the, on a server. But in, in general, the, the schematics is quite similar. The only thing that differs is that now we have basically a server component and a client component of our software, and they're not installed on the same machine, so to speak. So one can access all of the data from their own computer at their working uh, uh, place, of course. So, um, but of course the real advantage is the automation. Because once we have the trained data sets, if it's repetitive tasks that we have to do over and over and over again, for, exa for example, uh, uh, quality, uh, uh, quality control, in a process. Um, so there is plenty of, of uh, training and everything. So the, model is, the models are well trained and they're quite accurate. Then all of this tedious uh, analysis can be offloaded to AI models. And uh, um, at the end of the day, as already mentioned, the result would actually be an Excel sheet with predictions. So what the outcome of the uh, uh, AI analysis really is with certain per with percentages and probabilities. Um, and based on that, for example, management, etc., can uh, make their own decisions. So, um, and of course, we're not limited to any specific um, model. Uh, we use uh, a many, or one can actually uh, pre, uh, select, cr create uh, profiles, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and all of these things are introduced to make it easier for a customer to use the tool. And in the beginning, we actually helped them very much so to actually be able to use the tool. For example, annotations. It's integrated. It's easy. Well, we have to guide our customers how to do it. Because it's not, if it's not being done correctly, the data will actually end up being very noisy. And it will take a lot of uh, annotations before the model will actually start working. So assistance and experience are crucial factors here. Um, OK. And, uh, so just uh, as an idea for someone perhaps present in the audience today, um, we have many, many uh, uh, customized mod modules already. Um, the steps, I hope I gave you an idea how it works, because this is really the workflow, or at least I tried to demonstrate today, today the workflow using our software. So, the number of steps, steps is reduced to minimum. And it's basically a fixed workflow. 
So you might change your model. You might change the, the data, the shape of the data that enters the, 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 uh, the software. Different problem. But the steps that you have to take and the order in which you have to take them is always the same. Um, which simplifies things. Uh, and of course, the aim is uh, objective results and reproducibility. Because again, we are aiming at automation. Um, and comprehensible analysis. So, ah, sorry, this is, yeah, this is a video. Oh. Now, so this is basically how uh, uh, using, yeah, selecting a model, or sorry, uh, se se selecting a mo module, and then importing the data, and then getting away with your, uh, getting with your uh, on with your business, as simple as that. So, yeah, and uh, with that, I think I'm basically finished. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to me, giving me this opportunity to present our work. Uh, here are the uh, information details. Here are the information details about uh, me and uh, HS Analysis, the company. And here we, we have a selected uh, list of some of our, say, more known names customers. Okay? Thanks a lot. Thanks to you as well. Oh, perhaps I should. Yes. Okay, we do have some time for a few questions. If there are any, feel free. You can ask in German, just go right ahead. I speak German. Also, das geht auch gut in Deutsch zu fragen. So, no question. Okay. Um, what actually. You, you are talking about about a revolution. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get that point exactly. Uh, so what what, okay. what what exactly was the revolution then? Yeah. Well, you see, our, the way we think of our mission is to uh, approach more people. People who never thought about needing AI and and thinking that they are they, their workflow is already so good and optimal. Why would they bother? For example. And people who just think that it would require such enormous, as previously mentioned, uh, it's enormous task to re re reorganize the whole workflow. So let's just stick with what we have as long as we can. Once it starts really hurting, then we will think what we can do. Um, and what we are saying is that that's okay, but you know, it doesn't have to be so dramatic. You know, like in a sense of, if you wish, like real rouge. We want to kind of tuck it under the carpet, but still push it. Mm -hmm. so because let's start, let's start something small. Let's like start with a pilot project, something very small, and then let's see how we go. Uh, how we, let's build from that. So that's the idea. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not a moderator. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, you showed histopathology data. And, yes. And uh, I'm just wondering, did you, uh, the basis of it, is it like a real uh, slide that you got from, from pathology or did you just use image data from a multi-photon or multimodal uh, microscope? I think that's microscope data. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah. But, you know, we are working very closely with hospitals. So uh, I think in that respect, we are pretty flexible and we have a lot of experience. Um, like. Erlangen and you know all over Germany, especially south of Germany. So people come with uh, images mostly to us. Uh, they're not necessarily colored. So they are basically just, uh, you know. Like unstained. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, then we do the, the whole uh, the coloring and, you know, selection and, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Keine weiteren Fragen? Dann recht herzlichen Dank nochmal. Thank you. 
an Herrn Dr. Medet. Auch Sie bekommen natürlich ein oh. Gastgeschenk.